So welcome back to Boundary. Today we're going to be preparing the red grouse. Grouse is one of the only birds which is native to the, to the UK uh, and only to the UK, so you can't find this on the continent. Its flavour comes from the, the heather tips which it eats, uh, they make up about 90% of its diet, so it's got this really, really rich gamey flavour. This is an oven ready bird, we buy them long leg and prep them like this ourselves, so we get all the skin from the neck end which flaps back underneath and we tie it. Uh, you can ask your butcher to do that for you. So, beautiful bird, we're just going to put inside of it a faggot of herbs. I'm going to stuff that in, I'm going to leave the tin foil sticking out, that will remind me that it's in there, I can remove that before we, uh, before we serve it. So that's the grouse, then we've got uh, the base for the bread sauce, we're going to make uh, an onion clouté, so we're going to take a shallot and just stud it with a clove and a bay leaf, we we'll just push that through here and here. Two cloves is plenty, otherwise it'll become anaesthetic on your tongue. I'm just going to take some milk, pop this into a pan. If I put that face down, then the flavours will all come through that much better. So we've got the grouse, uh, we've got some breadcrumbs here, nice and coarse, they've just been in the food processor. That's going to be for our toasted breadcrumbs, which we're going to put in a pan with a good knob of butter, and they'll roast in the oven just until they're golden brown. So that can all go in together, into the pan, into a low oven, so nothing too fierce. Gas mark three or four. For the grouse we're going to need also a nice thick crouton. You can use really fresh bread for this uh, or stale bread. If your bread is smaller you can cut an angle like that so the crouton is big enough for the bird to sit on. Once we've fried this in the pan then we'll sit it on this once it's buttered and pop it in the oven for a few minutes. The only other thing I need to do is to make some coarse chunky bread to go into the bread sauce. For that we'll just take off the crust. If you're using fresh bread you can make bread sauce very quickly. It absorbs the, uh, the milk that we're infusing over on the pan without any problem. If you're using stale bread then you need to leave it a good 20 or 30 minutes for it to really soak up before you start mixing it, otherwise you end up with a very gloopy mess. So this way, that should be no, that should be fine, that's enough bread to thicken up that. We can just cut this up nice and coarse and that'll soak up all the flavours from the onion clouté and the infused milk that we're making over on the stove. So because it's quite soft and fresh, it doesn't need a long cooking time. If it's stale bread, then you've got to let it soak into the milk. Otherwise, as I said before, as you mix it, it turns into a thick custard and the, the liquid won't be able to get through into the bread to soften it. So that's the bread. We'll just reserve that for later. There we go. So into the pan. This can go over on the other heat. So we're roasting the bird. Just going to season it with a little bit of table salt. Okay, so I've just put a knob of butter in there. As it goes quiet, then it's hot enough to start sealing the bird off. I'm going to seal it on each side because we want the thigh to cook through and the thickest part of the breast here. It's still got that faggot of herbs inside. That's just bay leaf, rosemary and thyme. To give a little bit of an aromatic background to the, dirt, to the bird. Just sealing it. We don't want too much colour. And then we can just turn the bird over. I'm not, not putting the whole pan on the heat because I only want just this part of the bird to cook. If the whole pan's on the heat, then it's going to get too hot here and that'll start to catch and give you bitter flavours, which you don't want. Let's have a look at these breadcrumbs, we just give them a mix around, you can see the butter's spreading out, it's all going nice and golden. And because we're going to put the bird onto the, uh, onto the bread crouton, we're going to give the bottom of the bird a good seal as well. If I was just roasting it in the pan, I wouldn't worry too much about this. But because we're going to sit it on the crouton to soak up all the juice that comes out, to give the bottom of the bird a really good head start. You can see you've got lovely colour along the side here. That's penetrating the heat right through 
So it starts the cooking process. It's a little bit of colour on the top of the crown, very nearly ready to go. Just balance that where it is. Sometimes it won't quite balance for you. There we go. So I'm going to butter the bread on both sides. You can be quite generous about this. The butter helps to carry the flavour so it'll all soak into the bread with the, uh, the juices from the grouse. It's fine. That's grand. So we've got some nice colour on the grouse. Now, I could put the crouton into this pan, but already you can see the butter starts to colour a bit too much. I'm going to take a fresh pan, or you can just put it on a, on a roasting tray. So that pan's cold. We'll just transfer the grouse from there onto the crouton. That will stop it falling over or wobbling in the, uh, in the oven and help to make sure it cooks evenly. This I would say in the oven for about 12 minutes in the oven. That seems like a short amount of time, but you want the bird to be quite pink. And just, just pink enough so you can pull the leg off. That's the sign that it's going to be cooked. We'll see that later on. So the breadcrumbs are toasted really nicely. There's a few around the edge that we can just, so if they've just started to catch, just pull those ones out. But the rest of those look beautiful. You want a bit of character in there. So you want some bigger, chunkier bits as well as the, the fine stuff. And that way you get some chewy stuff, some really crunchy, crispy stuff. And all we have to do to finish that off, we've used unsalted butter. So there's a little bit of salt in the bread, but just to season it, and that will bring out the flavor of the grouse later on when we put the whole dish together. So these are ready, we'll just put them into a bowl. You can make these in advance, you can put them in a low oven if you've got an arga overnight, uh, or you can make them 20 minutes, half an hour before you want the grouse. So the grouse is in, we've got about another 10 minutes left to go, and then we'll need to rest that bird well. So I'll get a piece of tin foil ready for the resting. Right, so I've just taken the grouse out of the oven. The crouton, wow, that looks lovely and toasty. I'm just going to rest this on a plate. Just a piece of loose tin foil over the top. That'll keep nice and warm. You want it to rest so it stays, stays all juicy and succulent, but you don't want it to get cold, so you have to reheat it for service. So just loosely covered so it doesn't sweat, and then we can get on with making the accompaniments. So we've made the toasted breadcrumbs, so coarse breadcrumbs toasted in butter through the oven. We've got game chips. You can use ready salted crisp, but we slice, slice potatoes finely on a mandolin and then fry in vegetable oil. And the bread sauce. So we've got the infused milk here from earlier. So this is the shallot with the clove and the bay leaf. We're just going to hold those back, put some of the milk in a pan. Now, I don't think you can ever have too much of this. So I would say for, for two people, you'd be surprised, but you'll probably get through a pint of milk. So don't be shy. You can always make a bigger batch and have it a second day. It's very good cold. So we're just going to bring that back to the boil. We've got the fresh bread that we diced up earlier. We're just going to put that in, let that start to soak up. If you're using stale bread, remember, you don't need as much bread. It's going to soak up more liquid. So I think that should be enough. Just give it a little prod with a whisk. Again, this doesn't want to be too fine. So we're not going to whisk it into submission, we're just going to let it infuse and then we're going to break it up a bit, still leave it slightly chunky, like the breadcrumbs. Now all these together make the perfect garnish for a game bun. So we've got the bread sauce which is sticky and that'll be a vehicle for the toasted breadcrumbs. Once you get a mouthful of grouse dipped in the bread sauce and then dipped into the toasted breadcrumbs, you get all the flavours, all the textures, everything works really well together. So just this bread sauce so you can see the bread has soaked up the moisture just going to break it up a little bit it's come back to the simmer it'll keep on thickening up so if you leave it on the side of the stove it will get thicker and thicker and thicker right so there are just a couple of things to finish off the bread sauce we'll give that a little whisk that's looking great I'm going to put a knob of butter into there and while that melts just leave that to melt and that will stop it forming a skin on top Leave that to melt on the side, and then we have to make the liver toast. So we've got the heart and the liver from the grouse, a little bit of shallot, and a crouton that we're going to fry in clarified butter. When I say clarified, that means that we've warmed the butter up to separate the milk from the fat. We've just used the fat so the milk doesn't, the milk proteins won't burn, 
Perfect. I can just put that into there. And we can use the pan that we cook the grouse in just to fry off this liver. I'll start with the shallots. They can all cook with the juice from the grouse. And then just so this cooks evenly, I'll just cut the heart down the middle. And we're going to mash this afterwards on toast. Just to soften the liver and the heart can go in. That takes a moment longer than the, the liver. And then the liver goes in as well. Lovely. But just a touch of brandy in there. Which we want to cook off, we don't want the flavour of the alcohol. And yet another knob of butter. Possibly a little bit too much. That'll be fine. Just for it all to cook together. You've got the flavour of the brandy, the flavour of the heart and the liver, and the flavour of the shallot. And you can see when it's raw and when it's cooked. So, yeah, just as it's cooked, I'm going to take this back over. So I don't want too much of the butter, so I'm just going to separate that off. Just get the shallot in there. That's fine. Then just another pinch of salt. I'm going to mash this so it's still quite pink. But that's as you want it. So it's moist, still got all the flavour of the grouse. These hearts as well. With a little bit of persuasion, they'll mash up too. That will be absolutely perfect on the toast once it's nice and once it's nice and golden brown. So the crouton is done now. I'm just going to drain that on some kitchen paper. It's full of butter. So just take off the excess. I'm just going to spread that onto the toast. So for each grouse you should have one heart and one liver inside and that will make that much pate to go onto your onto your fried bread crouton. If you want to really fancy it up you can use as we do a piece of brioche for your crouton there. So that can go into your serving dish. Then we have the grouse which has been left nice and covered. Perfect. So we're just going to nick through the string here to release the legs. That's held it all together so while it's cooked, it's not all fallen to pieces. These herbs that we talked about before, you can just smell a little bit of that in the background. So the grouse is still nice and warm. Put that onto our serving dish. So we're gonna serve the tasted breadcrumbs on the side. That should be plenty. Wow, they look great. A few of the game chips, just at the, the back of the bird here and we'll put a nice big bunch of watercress because you need something fresh to go with this as well. Press to finish it off. We've got the bread sauce, the butter's all melted and that's good and thick and ready to serve. So again, not too over refined. It should be chunky and a bit gloopy. Perfect. And as I said before, if it's perfectly cooked, the leg should just pull straight off, he says. So just like that, so it's still nice and pink on the inside. And well, personally, I wouldn't be afraid to get my hands in there with the toasted breadcrumbs. That is the best part of the grouse. It's very good. Mm.